Megan George, City of Lakewood. Uh, hello, Mr. Chairman, members of County Council. It's very good to see you here this morning. Um, thank you for the opportunity to offer the City of Lakewood support for Resolution 2022-216, which will provide engineering services for the Lake Road Clifton Boulevard, Boulevard project. This project includes improvements to Lake Road in Rocky River and Clifton Boulevard in Lakewood that will provide a vital lakefront multi-use trail connection between our communities. This trail has long been envisioned by our collaborative planning efforts in creating the County Greenways Plan, the County Lakefront Public Access Plan, the Community Confluence TLCI study, and more locally, the City of Lakewood Bicycle Master Plan. In addition to providing this important link across Rocky River, the project proposes to repurpose excess lane capacity on the Lake Clifton Bridge and Clifton Boulevard by shifting traffic to the south lanes of a four lane median divided roadway. This creates new opportunities for multi-use trails, green space, tree planting, and gateways to our respective communities. Perhaps most important, this project provides a unique opportunity to, to utilize the northern half of the bridge for pedestrians, offering some of the best views of Lake Erie in all Ohio. Thank you to Cuyahoga County for the continued partnership and support on important quality of life projects such as this that support alternative forms of transportation, active recreation, connectivity across our region, and links to our lakefront. I look forward to advancing the design um, and, and thank you for your support. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Madam uh, Chair. Uh, Mr. Miller. Just like to take a point of personal privilege and uh, welcome Mayor George to County Council. Thank you very much for, for being here and we will see you later on in the day for the second Lakewood project. So it's, it, it's quite a day uh -huh. for Lakewood at, at County Council. All right. Where else would you want to be? All right. Okay. Uh, appreciate your comments, uh, Mr. Miller. Uh, any other speakers, Madam, um, Madam Clerk? No, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, if we could have the first matter referred to committee, please. Resolution number 2022-0194, awarding a total sum not to exceed $1 million to the City of Shaker Heights for the Lee Road Corridor Revitalization Project. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry, Madam Clerk. Before we do that, I missed approval of minutes from the uh, June 29th meeting. Uh, thank you, Ms. Conwell, or <laughs> everybody. <laughs> All right. Um, so um, where was I? So if we could have approval of minutes uh, from the uh, so June moved. 29th. We have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Thank you. And Madam Clerk, if you could just read it again since I threw everything off. Resolution number 2022-0194, awarding a total sum not to exceed $1 million to the City of Shaker Heights for the Lee Road Corridor Revitalization Project. Okay, and uh, we have a, someone to speak to this legislation. You do. Good All morning. Right. Uh, David Weiss, Mayor of uh, Shaker Heights. I'm here today uh, with Laura Engelhart, our Director of Economic Development, and Joyce Braverman, uh, Director of Planning. Uh, 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 Chair Tuma and members of council, we appreciate the opportunity uh, to be here uh, this morning with you um, and talk about uh, this exciting project that has been in the work works for um, quite a number of years. Um, and um, um, this project um, runs basically um, through the Lee Road corridor that begins um, at, at, at Van Aken, running all the way down to our uh, southern border and actually beyond at Scottsdale. And I'll, I'll just touch on this, on this briefly. Um, this is a total um, revitalization plan that we've been working on for a number of years for this um, critically important corridor um, in Shaker as well as into Cleveland. Uh, we contemplate um, and hope that we will um, uh, completely redo um, road, infrastructure, access, make it bike and pedestrian friendly, um, uh, ultimately redevelop um, the physical uh, structures on the corridor and uh, obviously create uh, uh, jobs as well. 
this project is not only important for Shaker, but also um, critically important for the, for the region. As I mentioned, Lee Road continues beyond our southern border into Cleveland, and so um, uh, this has become really a regional uh, project. Uh, we are working very closely uh, with the city of Cleveland, uh, Mayor Bibb and his staff, um, and are partnering on a variety of ways um, to um, revitalize not only our portion of Lee Road, but continuing into Cleveland. And so with that, I'm going to uh, stop and turn it over to uh, Laura Engelhardt. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And if you could just state your name for the record. Yes, thank you. you. Um, uh, Chair and Council Members, my name is Laura Engelhardt. I'm the Economic Development Director for the City of Shaker Heights. We have a few slides we're going to run through very quickly for you. Thank you very much. Um, as the mayor said, our goal is to completely reimagine and reconstruct the entire Lee Road corridor in Shaker Heights. It is a border to border project all the way from Cleveland Heights in the north through into Cleveland um, in the south. We are focused on um, the commercial district south of Van Aken, as the mayor said. Um, we are requesting $1 million in County Council ARPA dollars to contribute towards this project. Um, we are uh, intending to create, a, it totally revitalize the commercial district um, to make it much more accessible and equitable and sustainable. We have a, a number of, we have um, probably 65 to 70 businesses located in this commercial corridor, a uh, huge diverse mix of businesses, all small businesses. Um, we are hoping to integrate transportation improvements and land use improvements with our economic development strategy. And we have pretty robust community engagement and neighborhood revitalization efforts included in this project as well. I'm going to pass this to Joyce Braverman, our planning director, to talk about the challenges and why we're doing this project. Okay. And if you could state your name for the record, please. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Joyce Braverman, the planning director for Shaker Heights. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the current challenges and why we're doing this project. This has been a challenging corridor over the years and very difficult for us to challenge, to tackle. It's almost two miles long from border to border. Uh, traffic is congested. There are very narrow travel lanes. There are no pedestrian or bike facilities. About 20,000 cars uh, travel through the district every day. Uh, the commercial area has small lots that were originally platted in the 1930s for residential use. Uh, and um, a lot of curb cuts and driveways. Uh, the Lee Road project area, as you can see here, the mayor told you a little bit about this, but it actually runs from Cleveland to the south, uh, north to Cleveland Heights. Uh, it is um, proposed to have a road diet along this corridor. It's now four lanes, and a road diet means we'll go to one lane in each direction with a center turn lane. And it does traverse through residential areas, but also through the civic areas, the library, the city hall, police station, and many schools. Uh, it is also a NOACA designated bike route. Uh, the project area is also in a NOACA urban core community and disadvantaged community area. And half of the um, area is also in an environmental justice area. Um, and it's also in one of the county uh, recently established equity zone areas. Um, and so because of all these reasons, we feel it's very important. Here's just a few slides of what it looks like today. This is Lee and Chagrin. Uh, this is an intersection that has a lot of backups. It's also a very high crash area. Uh, in, the la in a three-year study that we uh, partnered with Cuyahoga County Public Works Department on a crash study, this intersection showed 56 crashes um, in that period and 43% injury rate. Um, all total on this corridor, there were 415 crashes, 80% um, at intersections, and this was 5% higher than the state average. Eight of those crashes were pedestrian or bicycle crashes. Uh, this is the existing conditions in the southern part. Uh, you can see here it's a high quantity of curb cuts, something like 47 curb cuts in a quarter mile. It's a very car-focused area. Um, there's no buffer between the sidewalk and the parking. As you can see here, people park over the sidewalk. And this is a dangerous and unattractive experience. There's also a significant a number of commercial vacancies and tax delinquent parcels in this district. Uh, so as uh, Director Engelhart mentioned, uh, this will be a comprehensive look at the district. We're in the middle of a plan right now uh, that will wrap up by the end of the year. Um, and the goal is to transform the area into a thriving commercial corridor. Uh, 
The project will include two major elements. First, border-to-border -border resurfacing, a road reconfiguration, road diet, and upgraded signalization. And second, um, targeted improvements in the southern commercial area south of Van Aken. Uh, this would include um, streetscape improvements, a new multi-purpose path, a bicycle path, um, and access management, which means we're going to try to close some of those curb cuts and um, consolidate them. In addition to the direct roadway improvements, we're also encouraging economic development by supporting businesses and supporting our adjacent residential neighborhoods to strengthen connections and access and safety and provide amenities for these areas of diverse and predominantly black neighborhoods, both in Shaker and in Cleveland. And with that, I'll take it back to Director Englehart. Thank you. And just to close, all of the improvements that Director Braverman mentioned have um, been informed by public comment. We've spent the entire last year doing very robust community engagement. We've held multiple meetings that are formal meetings. We've held informal meetings, walking tours, surveys. Um, we're wrapping up that engagement now, and our plan will be completed by the end of the year. Um, and our stakeholder committee, as the mayor mentioned, also includes representatives from the city of Cleveland, um, Cleveland residents um, and neighbors and businesses, um, RTA, ODOT, other stakeholders to make sure that this is a comprehensive look at improvements to the corridor that address needs and desires of the community. Quickly, here is our timeline. We are finishing our planning process right now and our engineering will get underway in 2023 um, with our environmental and bidding happening in 2024 and construction in 2025. So this timeline does align with the required spending uh, for ARPA dollars. And lastly, we're giving you a, a look at our budget. We are talking about a $19.9 million plan to do all of these infrastructure improvements. Um, we have a number of grants secured and a number of grants in the works right now. We are on the NOACA long range plan and anticipate being um, amended to the tip either later this year or as soon as NOACA um, takes those actions. Um, and the uh, Cuyahoga County ARPA funds are a component of that that are critical for us to continue to move forward. Happy to answer any questions the committee may have. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> sounds like an excellent uh, use of ARPA funding, and um, I don't know if the uh, councilwoman from the district wants to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, good morning again. I have lived in this community for over 37 years, and I am delighted um, with the opportunity for county council to support uh, projects such as this, and I asked my colleagues to give strong consideration to uh, move this project forward. Appreciate that. Um, any questions from my colleagues on this? Um, uh, Ms. Conwell. Uh, through the chair to the director, um, how, how far will this go? Like from, I, I saw your picture, I like the, the middle landscape. Uh, um, so how long is it slated to go? Like um, How far? How far, thank um, you. So the road diet, as Director Braverman mentioned, which reduces the number of lanes to two in each direction with that center turn lane and potentially some medians in there as well, um, will begin at our northern border at Cleveland Heights. Um, Cleveland Heights has already implemented the same configuration for traffic and will continue that south all the way through Shaker. There is a portion of the road right at Van Aken where the RTA, the um, the blue line light rail goes through and um, with the number of cars, we won't be able to reduce it only at that intersection um, for safety reasons, um, but we will be able to continue that south of Chagrin all the way into Cleveland. And we're coordinating with Cleveland to align our infrastructure investments, um, hoping for the same improvements to continue south into Cleveland. So would you say it would go all the way up to, what is that, Harvard? Uh, so the city of Cleveland is working on that now and we are coordinating with them, yes. Thank you. Yes. All right. And um, what's the estimated, you might have said this, what's the estimated start date on this? The construction is slated to start in 2025. In 2025. Um, engineering will start next year. Okay. And then um, maybe this is, a, is Miss English? I see Miss English. Is a, are, are, will each of these, are, is the city doing the work or the county going to? At, at this point, the city is doing the work. Okay. I just had to ask. Okay. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't have opened my mouth. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Um, questions from my colleagues? Any other questions? Mr. Yeah. Miller? So uh, of the total project cost, 
how much of it is for road work and how much of it is for things other than road work and and what would those other things be? Uh, thank you. The majority is for road work, uh, but there is about $4 million of this that would be uh, specifically for streetscape and for bicycle infrastructure. Uh, it, we also have money uh, from the state uh, safety grant uh, to improve lighting and sidewalks. So I would say about five million total would be going to pedestrian and bicycle infrastructure. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, any other questions? Okay, um, seeing none, um, I'm gonna make a motion to move this on to second reading. Um, for the second. full council, and we have a second. To, uh, we have a motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. And we'll move this on. And uh, this will go on to the uh, August 2nd meeting um, for second reading. Okay? Thank you. Thank very you for much. your time. Appreciate it. All right. It. Good luck to you. It sounds like a great project. Mr. Chair, can I have my name on it? Yes. And if you could add my name as well, um, Madam Clerk. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Madam Clerk, um, I understand the next uh, item um, we have a staff uh, would like to address here on R2022-0197. Good morning, uh, Jim, Jim Boyle, Cuyahoga <laughs> County Council staff. Um, on behalf of uh, Mayor Booker, I did just get off the phone with him regarding Resolution 2022-0197. Um, Mayor Booker expressed his, his apologies. I guess he had a, con uh, a scheduling issue and just couldn't make it down on time. And he begged for this uh, committee's willingness to allow him uh, to present at a later date. And I brought that request to the chair, um, indicated that I would articulate on behalf of Mayor Booker his uh, apologies, and hopefully we can reschedule a new time for uh, the village of Highland Hills' uh, ARPA request. Okay, we appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Boyle. Um, so, Madam Clerk, I would just ask that we put this uh, on hold, and we can bring it up at the uh, next available committee meeting. Thank you, and I will... Uh, I will uh, I'll contact Mayor Booker immediately. And Appreciate let him know. that. Thank right. you thank for you. your help on that, Mr. Boyle. Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, if you could read the next piece of legislation. Resolution number 2022-0213, declaring that public convenience and welfare requires the rehabilitation of the Green Brighton Culvert at the intersection of Green Road and Brighton Road in the cities of Beechwood and Shaker Heights. Okay. And if you could just state your name for the record. Nicole English with Public Works. Sorry, I'm slow moving with a knee injury today. Oh, no. Um, okay, the first item is welfare and convenience for a culvert that um, the city of Beechwood had come to us as kind of an emergency repair, right? They went out and inspected, and um, they felt it was in pretty bad shape and needed a immediate repair. So it was something they had not planned for. So, you know, we do have some emergency money set aside for these kind of situations. We sent our bridge inspection team out there to look at it with them. Um, and they kind of agree with the city on what their um, fix is going to be. And so we are asking to put $150,000 towards the project. It's a million dollar project. The two cities will be splitting the remainder, um, 850,000, so 425 each. So this is um, a small amount of the the project that we're giving, but it is out of our emergency funds, and they were appreciative of that. Okay. Uh, will the road be closed during this time? I don't believe so. Okay. That's... But the city will be running the project. Okay. Um, and who's responsible for the maintenance of that? The, the cities. The city? Okay. Correct. So this is one of those culverts that, you know, we have a couple programs outside even of the emergency um, where we do partner with the cities on projects that are their responsibility, but yet we... Um, Does the county have any obligation to that culvert? No. Okay. Any questions from my colleagues? Mr. Miller. Mr. Chairman, Ms. English, how much money do we have in the emergency fund? So we put a million dollars a year. Um, I feel like last time I was here, we were just talking about it, and there was a project we were putting money in for also. So I can get you a balance. It's, it's really not like a a separated fund. It's mm -hmm. part of our capital plan that we assign money to, and then it just rolls over if we don't use it year to year. So I, I can let you know what we've used this year, what we've uh, assigned to projects this year. And uh, how do you decide which funds to approve from emergency funding and how much money to allocate to them? So it's normally on a request. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just stepped on my leg. I'm really having trouble today. Um, it's 
on a request basis. So this one, um, a request had come in through the city engineer and the mayor um, to the county executive. We normally take a look at it, decide if it has a, a public impact that we think we should um, use our money for. So if you know there's a decent amount of traffic in this area, if it really was something that kind of popped up opposed to just something they've been watching for a long time and just decided not to, to ignore it, um, if they, you know, it seemed like it needed to be done right now and they didn't have the funding to do it. So we kind of just evaluate all those things and then we make a recommendation to the county executive. And typically we'd either split it. Um, a lot of these emergencies come to us, they're a couple hundred thousand only because it's a smaller fix. And so we'll split them 50-50. This was a higher dollar value project. So we thought 150,000 was kind of a, a good amount. That's, that's a typical award that we would do. And... Uh Mr. Chair, Ms. English, how do min municipalities even know that this fund exists? So we've presented um, several times to Mayors and Managers Association with kind of our slide deck of all our different programs, and that is listed in there. So uh, most cities have seen that when new mayors come in, we typically meet with them. Um, we have been through regional collaboration, having these meetings with newer mayors, and we present that same slide deck of all of our programs, and that is in there. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you, Mr. Miller. Um, what is the start date on this? They were planning to construct it this year, so they had had plans developed earlier when they came to us, you know, as to how they were going to approach it. So I believe that's still the plan. They had asked us if they could go forward without our money, and I said it's a risk that you take until it gets approved. Um, but they were going to try to bid it, I think, right around now in order to get it done this okay. fall. <clears throat> so um, what what is the ask as far as readings because we're going to be going break so correct it would be nice and helpful if it um could come second reading suspension i think it sat out because of no committee the last okay, couple weeks right. so that would be great if there are no objections i'll make a motion for moving this forward on second reading suspension do i have a second second, second. we have a motion and a second um on second reading suspension all those in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed nay ayes have it so we'll move our 2022-0213 on second reading suspension. Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes. Would you please add my name to this Yes, if you could please add uh, Councilwoman uh, uh, Turner's name to that, please. Okay, um, Madam Clerk, the next uh, resolution. Resolution number 2022-0214, authorizing the appropriation of real property for reconstruction of Stearns Road from Shady Road to Bagley Road in Olmstead Township. Okay, and uh, state your name for the record. <laughs> Nicole English with Public Works again. Um, I think Janine is going to hand out to you a um, map here that shows the parcels that we're talking about. So this is our authority to appropriate. Mm -hmm. We are doing a project on Stearns Road um, in Olmstead Township, just south of Bagley Road, in cooperation with the Turnpike. The Turnpike's actually replacing the bridge there, and so we've partnered with them that we're going to do the roadway portion and sewers at the same time they're doing the bridge. And the Turnpike is actually going to um, construct the whole project in partnership with us. So there are uh, eight parcels that have not come to terms with our offer to them. You know, we go through a process where um, we have an appraiser that appraises the property. We go out and make the offers. We talk to them through our consultant. Um, and most of the parcels that you see that are not highlighted have agreed to the price and we've paid them for it. These eight highlighted for different various reasons are not agreeing and um, we need to file an appropriation in order to move the project forward on <clears throat> schedule. Many of them are unhappy with the sanitary um, we're putting in a sanitary sewer, which means they only have so long to connect, and they're not really happy about that, right? But that's an EPA finding that we, we just have to do. Um, and so they're less concerned about what we're paying them for the temporary construction of the roadway and more concerned about the sanitary and just being unhappy with that. Yeah. So they just refuse to talk to us anymore and don't want to sign. Um, the, the biggest parcel is um, called Strike Zone Inc., but it's, you might know it as Swings and Things. They, they were a little unhappy with maintenance of traffic, and so we did work with them, and we switched the one-way. Um, there's going to be a portion of the project that will be a one-way detour at certain times, and so we've, we actually switched it in the direction they wanted, but at the end they still weren't willing to sign. So we feel like we've done as much as we can to work with them as well. Um, there's various estimates. Many of these ones um, south of the Turnpike Bridge are only $300. They're, it's only temporary that we just need their land for a very short time to grade um, out the road. Um, so it's it's not high dollar values. The highest one is the um, the swings and things, which I believe is 
around 15,000, I thought. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. I mean, we, we, we work with them. We'll still continue from now till we file to talk to these people if possible. Uh, many of them have kind of said, leave us alone, fine, file. Um, but if we can settle before we go to court, we would like to. Huh, okay. Um, yeah, these situations are never fun, but necessary, I understand. Um, so as far as the um, uh, timeline, what are, what are we looking for? Is the project in jeopardy if we don't move forward? Yeah, so because we're partnered with the, the Turnpike, they need to sell this fall the project so it's ready for the spring. Um, and the the whole idea is to be closed um, during the summer of next year, so not to impact school, mm -hmm. you know, as far as bus routes and that kind of thing. So we have to be able to certify the right-of-way um, probably by the end of September at the latest in order to, for them to sell their project. So we would ask for second reading suspension to get this moving so we're not waiting during the um, break. Okay. Um, any questions from my colleagues on this? Yes, Mr. Miller. So, um, Mr. Chair, Ms. English, I don't see uh, the sw swings and things for 15,000 listing on here. Does that mean that you and they are now in, in agreement? I know. I just, I, I'm looking at that too. And I just got this map from our real estate folks this morning. So that's what has me a little bit um, perplexed. I'm hmm. wondering if they did settle with them in the meantime. Do you know if it was removed in between? I don't know. Okay, well, um, let me, we'll double check with that. I'm guessing if it's not on the agenda, we must have settled right before. There could have been a change by time before yeah, we put If you it could on. just follow up with us to confirm yep. that. So we just want to make sure that legislation is proper before Correct. going out. Um, but, I mean, if we have to add them, we have to add them. They're part of the, you know. Yeah. Total I get to here. sit down in a couple of resolutions. I'll send right. a few texts when okay. I do that. I would hope swings and things would <laughs> such a happy place. <laughs> Um, so, okay. Um, so, any qu any other other questions, Miss uh, Conwell? Uh, through the chair to uh, Miss English. <clears throat> what well, without this work, what what is the impact on the communities? I'm just trying to get where. So, they're... if we we are widening the road slightly um, at the intersection of Bagley to give a turn lane, which should help traffic. We're adding sidewalk along this whole stretch, which, if you know the area. Bagley Road is where the schools are located too. Um, so, and there's a big neighborhood to the south here, Woodgate Farms. So we're adding um, sidewalk, we're widening the road to be safer, and we're adding the sanitary sewer, which is a health improvement um, for the area. So that's why we feel this project is necessary to do. Um, and again, we need that portion of their property in order to just do the construction yeah, work. I'm just trying to understand from their point of view why they wouldn't want Mainly it. the sanitary. So... A lot of folks live in the township because they kind of still want to be a little bit rural. And so they're not real happy that once that sanitary sewer comes in, they have to connect within a certain time by law and it costs money. Yeah. And so that's, that's the problem. We do have a loan program that we do through the county so that they can spread it over time over their, um, their tax payments. So it's not such a burden up front, but it is expensive. I mean, and it's just, if you buy a new house in a newer neighborhood, it's included in the the price you pay for the house, it just wasn't there at the time that they bought their house. So it, it could be, I mean, tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, for some, for some of these people, it's almost like a, a second mortgage in Correct. some instances. So it can, it can get It's costly. pricey. Mm -hmm. And so I think they're, they're just, in theory, not happy about having to expend the money. Okay. Okay, any other questions? I do. If you don't Mr. Uh, Sweeney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you said sanitary and... Uh, what about sidewalks? Is We're adding that something sidewalks. you're going to be able to talk about with the township? We are adding sidewalks on this project. You're adding yeah, sidewalks. and there's nothing there today. Yeah, that's, that'd be, yeah. I've been hearing stuff about that. And you got me kind of through the chair. I'm not baffled, but tens of thousands of dollars, and we have a loan program for something that they chose to when they purchased their house, now we're forcing it upon them. Is that going to, could get caught up? I know we have the power of the government to be able to do this, but in some way, shape, or form, I think a grant program for eight how or whatever, it just seems not fair. So we do try to, um, 
We go after different grant programs that we try to bring the cost down of the project, but it's the EPA findings that it's because of they have septic tanks now and they're fight they put on findings and orders for septic tanks that are essentially leaching into the area and getting into the water stream. So that's beyond us. I mean, that's not our control. So when the EPA makes the demand, right. we have to, within so long, put in sanitary sewers in certain portions of um, the unsewered un areas of the township. And so that's where we've been working for years, um, doing you know projects at a time and trying to do them at the best cost we can. But again, if you bought your house wherever, at some point, some part of that portion, you probably paid... Yeah. for it. It just, right. you know, wasn't done in these areas when the houses were built. I'm just going to push a little bit farther, but nothing more than so I can understand a little bit. Uh, through the chair, just on that point, though, it's it's not retrofitting, and the cost is ex uh, exponentially higher. Correct. Are you saying each one of these uh, properties have been identified as leachers? Not necessarily. Oh, they, they, they do it as yeah. a group. So there is ways where they can appeal to the EPA to not have to tie in at that time. Say they put a new septic system in the last yeah. five years or 10 years, and it's working well. They can appeal and get a longer time to tie in, but eventually they will have to tie in once the sewer goes in. Right. That is we went, uh, not to cut in, but we went, in, we went through this in Parma a couple years back uh, on Pleasant Valley first and then on West Ridge, Ridgewood Drive. And some of our largest meetings of, of people coming in upset were some of these homeowners, and you have to empathize with them because it's a really, really difficult burden it. sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that they're always... We're, I know we're trying to improve things, but it's not something they're asking for sometimes. Correct. And to your point, it's, you know, it's costly. So, And, and it's not it. like yeah. redoing your kitchen and you can see a result. You know, I mean, it's, <laughs> right. nobody really wants to put the money into an underground sewer. And through the chair, thank you for the full explanation. The one thing I'm going to ask to be done is uh, to see if they're functioning properly or not. Is that... Is that well been completed yet in regards to the septic? As, I think, as, as Ms. English said, though, I think the EPA is what mandates. No, no, that's so what the EPA, I want the EPA to. So we can give you a report on if anyone has a finding right now in this area and kind of what the recommendations are. I can get you that information. Yeah, and this. I'm doing it for the sole purpose of this thing moving forward. Because if we have eight people fighting or saying no, and they use the argument through the chair of, wow, we're good. Ours isn't out of EPA compliance, so we're going to hold up this. We don't want to have to do this, and we want more time. The role will still go, but they don't have to connect right away. I'm Correct. just trying to get that at least yeah. in the mix of if I'm good, I'm going to chill till they think it's going to be bad in the future. Mm -hmm. so it, it, that was yep. more for me to go through the whole sequence. And the property is needed for the roadway portion of the project. The sewer is going in the middle of the road. So it's not. it's just that the project is tied together, so they're kind of saying... This is their opportunity to be a little bit um, pushing back because we do need them to to sign off on their property. So, I, thank you for your deference, oh, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. Absolutely. Yeah, and we'll get you some more information on this no, as far as where these people stand and yeah, just if they're it, it doesn't really matter through the chair for. I just wanted to have that discussion so I have a fuller understanding. But yep. my hope is if the EPA starts trying to make people comply immediately when their septic tank is. Uh, not malfunctioning, I wouldn't mind knowing that because I would push the EPA to yeah. go along with what you just said. And, and they're pretty good. I mean, we've seen people file, um, again, if they've shown some investment in there, the EPA gives them a kind of an extension. So we have seen that happen, that they work with them. Thank you, and I'll be quiet for a while. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Thank Chair. Uh, Ms. Conwell. I threw the chair to Nicole. Do we know how many other areas in the county that could potentially need this? So there's right several right more pieces of Olmstead Township that we have sewer projects. I'm talking about countywide. Um, do we come in? I was surprised that Parma had so many because actually on Sprague Road too that we did, there's a similar situation there and actually all four of the communities, even Strongsville, North Royalton, Parma and Middleburg. Um, I think some of the southern part of North Royalton, there, there's some outlying, some more, not the, the main urban areas, but there are, there are a couple. I could get you a, a map of unsewered portions of the county. I don't know if we could think, you know, proactively on that. Anything ever happen with the chair the program or something we could have it start to have in place for them. You know, there's going to be more. 
Mr. Miller. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Ms. Ms. English, is the sewer project being done as, at the same time as the road project, and who's doing the sewer project? Uh, the Turnpike is running the entire project as far as construction goes. They have not bid it yet, so we don't know who the contractor will be, <clears throat> but it will include everything, the roadway work, the, the sewer work, um, the sidewalk, and the bridge that will all be sold as one project. And the whole idea was that we don't go in there twice and shut down the road and make a big mess. I mean, the idea was to kind of do this as a collaborative effort, and we think we gain a little bit of efficiency um, on the contractor doing it all. And so if... The Turnpike is doing the project. Why is it up to us to do the property acquisition? Because their portion really is only the bridge. They've agreed to construct it all as one, but we even are doing the design of the roadway and the sanitary, and then the plans are getting merged together um, and being sold by them. And we're paying for the whole, all of our portion of the project. We have an agreement with the Turnpike laying out who's paying the what cost. So we had to provide the right of way needed for the portion that we are impacting. And uh, regarding the sidewalks, do any of the adjacent property owners have to pay assessments for the sidewalks, or are they getting the sidewalks free? Sidewalks are part of the project. Yeah, they are not paying. Okay. Okay. Um, any other questions? We did get, just oh. to, to let you know, we did get issue one money awarded for this project for next year, and so we will use that grant money. The, we get it on a percentage basis. So I, I don't know exactly what the percent is, but we will apply that to the sanitary as well. So that grant will come off the top, which will lower the cost for these people to tie into the, the sanitary. So we, we did get some grant money. Again, it's for the whole project, but say it's 25%, 25% of the sanitary will also come off the top. So we have reduced the cost a little bit um, through some grant programs. Okay. Uh, any other questions from my colleagues? Um, seeing none, uh, then you're looking to move this along, I would understand, with the, the, you know, these issues here. So I'll make a motion to move R22, I'm sorry, 2022-0214 on for second reading suspension. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. And then we'll move that on for second reading suspension. Um, Madam Clerk, if you could read the next piece of legislation, please. Resolution number 2022-0215, authorizing an amendment to state contract number 2535 with Great Lakes Petroleum for the purchase of fuel for various county facilities. Okay, and if you could just state your name for the record. Good morning, Melody Say, Department of Public Works. This contract is um, one of two mechanisms that we use to get um, fuel into our county vehicles and trucks. Okay. This specifically is amendment for um, Great Lakes Petroleum. This amendment will put us in line with our current state contract with um, Great Lakes Petroleum, taking us, I believe, until June of next year. Uh, this is supplying the uh, diesel and fuel at our Harvard garage. And I welcome any questions. Okay. Um, is this contract uh, amendment consistent with other contracts in the past? Yes. Okay. And then um, would you happen to know how much we spent on fuel last year? I know, I know it's been going up. I know that. I don't have the total number that we spent on fuel because we do have two contracts. Do you want us to include our Voyager contract? Yeah, if, if, you, you, if you could, that'd be good so we could see yes, that. Yes, I can. Um, with the you know, gas prices going up and down, do we lock in? Is that how we do it? or? We don't lock in a specific price. What um, the state contract allows us to do is um, Great Lakes Petroleum um, sends in an RFP and um, they lock in on the OPIS schedule. And so they're usually about um, one to four cents above the OPIS schedule. Okay. So we do see um, competitive pricing. So right now, I think when I looked at the OPIS schedule for our District 12, um, the gas is like 293, which Everyone knows right now it's 419. Oh, okay. If you would, you know, if you all kind of Is regular. there any way I can lock into that 293? No. Okay. I had to ask. Um, and so, um, do we have uh, fuel reserves? Not necessarily. necessarily we, okay. we do have tanks, so they do fuel up our tanks but then at the just... Harvard garage. And then, okay. I mean, I think we get it every like, once a month, we fill up. 
Okay. And then um, this is stored where? In the, is this at the Newburgh Heights facility? Yes, the Harvard Maintenance Garage. Okay. Yes. Uh, how big is the tank? I don't know how big our tanks are, but I can get that information. Okay. Um, with COVID, have we decreased in the use of fuel, or is that not? We've been working still. No. Yeah. It, um, this actually um, fuels for our uh, custodial workers, our mail room, our sanitary workers. They have been working 100% all through COVID. Right. We've never been down. Okay. Um, questions from my colleagues? Yes. Mr. Miller. So you mentioned the OPA schedule. What does OPA stand for? It is, and I do have that information. It is the um, Oil Price Information Service Schedule. So is this like a wholesale price? The OPA schedule has different pricing, but our pricing for the state is wholesale. But the OPA schedule is, it just doesn't have just wholesale pricing. It has just regular pricing also. Um, and, oh, I'm sorry, you have another question, Mr. Miller? So, who do we actually buy the fuel from? As far as our fuel comes from Great Lakes Petroleum. And uh, how do they access it for 293 when everyone else is paying 419 it's actually a state contract. So when they lock in and do the RFP, they RFP with the state to only keep their pricing within a certain um, amount per the state contract. Because it's bulk fuel pricing. Mm -hmm. So you get a benefit when you buy in bulk. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 So sounds like we're doing as well as we can do under the circumstances right yeah, and the price does fluctuate when we saw the prices as close as five dollars we saw it over four mm -hmm. it's just that the prices are coming down now that's why you're seeing the 293. Mm -hmm. okay okay any other questions we good um and with this i see the uh contract is extended to 6 30 23. Mm -hmm. um you know, I know we need fuel, so are you, you guys looking? I am for second um, reading respectfully suspension? requesting second reading suspension. So if there's no objection, I'll make a, a motion for moving R2022-0215 forward on second reading suspension. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay, and the ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, and there's been a request to move uh, r 20 I'm sorry, R, I'm having trouble with 2022. r R2022. Dash 0242 next, um, as Mr. Popovich has to uh, a meeting uh, or has to leave. So if we could, Madam Clerk, we'll return to the other items um, next, and we'll move forward with this one first. Resolution number 2022-0242, authorizing an amendment to contract number 1921 with SMG Huntington Convention Center of Cleveland for lease of space at Huntington Convention and Center of Cleveland and the Global Center for Health Innovation. Okay, and if you could just state your name for the record. Melanie Say, Department of Public Works. This is just a request to um, extend our current um, lease agreement with the convention center to allow for um, the court proceedings, uh, specifically, I think, jury proceedings. Uh, Mr. Popovich, um, the court administrator here for Common Pleas Court, can um, answer any additional questions if you have. Okay, and if Mr. Uh, Popovich could pop up to the podium quickly. Pop up. Well... <laughs> that just came out like that, so, okay. All right. Thank you for moving up. I was just told to be back for a meeting. That's... So, which I was, on a, was not on my calendar, but anyways, so thank you. No problem. Um, so, uh, Mr. Popovich, what, what is the actual use of the facility as in terms of uh, courtroom activity? The fourth floor of the Global Center is currently and has been used for during the, the COVID uh, pandemic uh, for the assembly of our jurors. So um, basically, it's our staging area. The, the jurors uh, congregate there in the fourth floor. They're summoned to that facility. And then from there, they're parceled out to the uh, Justice Center, where they, they then go to the different courtrooms uh, in the Justice Center. Okay. And it allows us to be able to re really give us social distancing for jurors and, and make them more comfortable so they're not sitting on top of each other, which is what our space is currently on the fourth floor of the Justice Center. 
And how many trials, um, are, are the trials at the Justice Center or in the global? They center? are at the Justice Center. So the space, there, there's two rooms over at the global center um, that we use for civil trials for the visiting judges because the old courthouse is still, um, there's no plexiglass and stuff over in the old courthouse. So sometimes the civil cases will be housed uh, over in the uh, global center. But no criminal trials no longer are held in the Global Center. Those are all held over in the Justice Center. And then any cases that are in front of the assigned 34 assigned judges of the Common Police Car are also in the Justice Center. So we've transitioned, for the most part, all of our proceedings back to the Justice Center. Okay. Except for the visiting judge proceedings. And, and as far as trials, would you have any indication as to how many were held in the first half of 2022? I do not, but I can get you that. Uh, okay. Do you know if it's increased? Oh, dramatically. dramatically I, so I, and I could tell you, um, which is really a great thing for us to move forward and being able to have trial certainty, is that uh, our backlog in cases has finally started going down. So that's good news for everybody. So. Okay. And then um, my last question is, what are your expectations for 2023? I know, I mean, it sounds like that we have some variant out there and things are picking up again with respect to the pandemic and such. So... Um, what, what do you expect is 2023, this uh, same capacity as last year or greater capacity? Um, or? When you say capacity uh, in terms of? People coming through. Uh, well, my guess is it will be a similar capacity. Um, again, we are going full uh, throttle, I guess, as they would say, in terms of scheduling our cases and, and then some uh, to try to make up on that backlog. So we certainly continue to do what we need to do to eat into that backlog. And hopefully in 2023, uh, that backlog will no longer exist. So uh, with the help of the Global Center, I will tell you this right now, that this end I at least will end December 31st. Right now, we do not have plans to go into 2023 um, for a number of reasons. One, we're all hopeful uh, that uh, we don't enter into a situation where we have to mask every day right now, just so that council understands there, there is a order that goes into, um, it's automatic. So when Cuyahoga County is in the red, we go into masking uh, and social distancing. When we're in the low to medium, we are not. So hopefully we stay out of the red and for the rest of the year, and then and that's good news for all of us. So if that's the case, certainly that our jurors will feel much more comfortable uh, coming to uh, do their civic duty. So Okay. I'll open it up to our questions. Uh, Mr. Miller and then Ms. Conwell. So uh, am I correct that your request to extend this contract through the end of the year reflects a belief that COVID-19 remains a significant threat? It does. We're still, again, when we're in the red, we're masking, we're social distancing in the Justice Center. And uh, from what you're saying, I... Uh, I get the impression that in terms of the number of of uh, hearings and trials that you're holding that that the courts are operating at full capacity and that you're uh, you're starting to work down the backlog is that correct we are that's yeah. correct okay. Thank you. and again try, our ability to use the global center is really assisting in that effort at this point okay and Ms. Conwell uh, through the chair, uh, chair to Mr. Popovich, has there been any changes in this agreement from the previous agreement, the contract that's before us? Not that I can think of offhand. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Seeing none, um, uh, um, obviously this is an active contract, ongoing contract, and we'd like to see the uh, jur jurors continue to operate in a timely and efficient manner. So. Uh, is the request here for a second reading suspension on this as well? And I'm not trying to push these through. I'm just trying to make sure that we're doing the right thing so we, justice is not averted here. So the request is a second reading suspension. So that we can stay on the payment timeframe that um, SDG agreed to. Okay, so I'll make a reading for second reading suspension in R2022-0242. Do I have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second for second reading suspension. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. And thank you, Mr. Popovich. And I don't know, do you need a note or something for one of the judges? Or <laughs> <laughs>
I know how they get. As long as you'll take my phone call when the judge is on there, it'd be great. <laughs> Mr. Chair, can so I have my much. name Thank added? You. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, can I have my name added? To yes, uh, Ms. Conwell would like her name added to that as, as well. As well as mine. As well as Ms. Turner. Thank you. Okay, thank you, ladies. <coughs> Madam Clerk, um, if you could, uh, we'll go back to our uh, regularly scheduled program. Resolution number 2022-0216. Making an award on requisition number 8218 to Orchard, Hilts, and McClimmick Incorporated, doing business as OHM advisors, in the amount not to exceed $1,448,950 for engineering services for the Lake Road Clifton Boulevard project. Okay, and if you could just state your name for the record. Nicole English for Public Works. Just to quickly go back, I did confirm um, that the swings and things, also known as strike zone property, should be included. Okay. We are still negotiating with them. And so I don't know um, how it got taken off. It's parcel 30. She believes it was sent over to the clerk that way. So we'll just work with the clerk to okay, get that Okay, that's put fine. Back I was amending on. that. Make sure okay. that's on there. Okay, appreciate okay. that. Um, so then the OHM contract, that is what Mayor George was up here talking about earlier. Um, and also we have a, a little handout here just to go over quickly the lakefront plan. I know you've heard from Director Dever, and he would be here today, but um, he is taking his son to Ohio State for orientation oh, today. fun so, time. Um, he's doing that instead. But uh, the Lake Clifton connector is one piece of the four projects that have come out as focus areas. And so that's connecting Lakewood and Rocky River um, across the bridge that right now is significantly wider than it needs to be, um, built almost highway-like years ago um, and unnecessary for the current volume. So we're looking to connect with a more pedestrian and bicycle-friendly um, situation. Again, kind of the views that you get of the lake and um, down the river here are pretty significant. And so trying to take advantage of that and making it um, almost a linear park um, per se. And so this is step one in hiring the consultant um, to do the work. OHM is um, the consultant who did the preliminary work actually through the planning commission. And so they had submitted, um, there was, we put an RFQ out, there was four proposals submitted. They were selected as the top firm based on our selection committee. They're meeting the diversity goals that were set by DEI. Um, and they are planning to start this work upon um, execution of the agreement. I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, and um, what's the estimated cost of the contract? This contract is just under 1.5 million. The estimated cost for the project and construction is around um, six to eight million. I think it just depends on how much um, bells and whistles we put in based on, um, we're kind of designing where you can add things in depending on what kind of other grant money we get. So we are currently pursuing um, some federal grants for the project and also um, through NOACA. So do you think the estimate funding. will eventually be met? Based on other grants being Correct. obtained? Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, what are the actual consultants going to do, the engineering consultants? What are they going to do? They will take from the planning stage and essentially get us all the way through construction documents so we can bid the project. So they'll do continued community engagement to be sure um, we're on track with, with both cities and the residents surrounding it, and then they will they will actually do the design, so putting um, construction plans together. And what is the, you might have said this already, uh, the, what is the estimated start and completion date? They are anticipated to start upon execution, and we would intend for this to be, is, the plan should be done late next year. They'll stay on as a consultant just in case during construction there's any questions, but um, they should be getting most of the work done over the next year in three or four months. Okay. Um, I'll open it up uh, to my colleagues for questions. Yes, I have a couple questions. Mr. Miller. So, uh, what is the anticipated timetable for the actual project construction? It would anticipate to start in 24 and likely take a season and a half or so. Since there's a lot of landscaping on it, it would come back the next spring and finish up. And uh, how far is it from the bridge to the lake the way the crow flies? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. We see that on my uh, <laughs> Google search. Sean Leniger is here from the city. I don't know. Um, yeah, it is a thousand feet or so. I mean, it's pretty close, right? So this is a this is one place where we kind of saw as an early win um, on the lakefront planning that has really 
a nice, you know, nice views, a big area that you could stop and enjoy yourself, get across between the two cities. Um, there's definitely destinations on both sides that people want to get to, but the traffic is going through there, you know, at a, a decent rate because they have so much width. Um, so this was kind of an early identification of a project that, that just seemed to make sense to capture all of the lakefront goals. Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions? Um, so looking at the um, time frame on this, what uh, is the request as far as moving it forward? Second reading suspension would be wonderful just to get out in front of the break. Okay. Thank you. Um, I will make that motion. I'll make a motion for second reading suspension in R R2022-216. Second. Um, we have a second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. And uh, the ayes have it on uh, moving that forward. I have one question, Mr. Chair. It is part of ARPA dollars, so why isn't it not going through readings, or is that just for council initiated projects? Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a fair question. Um, we have been going through second reading for full readings on these ARPA dollars. Um, for council initiated ones, I'm not certain. So this is in the um, executive, the executive had set aside. I think eight million total for the lakefront in part of his plan, and so it's being divided up into several different projects. So I don't know if you are treating the council ones different, but it was in part of his. Um, it's in his um, funding, per se, opposed to council. So I leave it up to you. I mean, if you feel like it should go three to what, make. Uh, it let me missing this. Let me ask you: if if we do let this go to full three readings, is that going to impede the project or? It does. It does hurt our schedule. The thing that we're running into now is a lot of the grants that we're going after federal grants. We need to be further along in the design, and so we need cost estimates. We need the consultants on board to help us write those grants. So the sooner we get them on board, the better we are for those, which are constantly coming out with that new um, infrastructure money that's coming down the pike. So, well. A month doesn't seem like a lot. It actually would be good for them to be on board with us, so to help us get future funding. I don't. Ha I don't have a problem with it. I just wanted to make that extension. Right. I'll make. The, I'll make the motion if you want me to. Yeah. If if um, yeah, that's fine. We could. If no one has an objection, I'll move this forward on second reading suspension, and we it will go to the next council meeting. Correct. If someone has an objection on council and wants to do full three readings on it, or needs an explanation from uh, you you folks, then that can happen. So. I think we voted on it. Already. Yeah, oh, we <laughs> voted on it. Yes, yeah, so we'll move this along for second reading suspension, and uh, makes makes sense. Makes perfect sense. Um, I'm sure, I'll end up in a <laughs> podcast. Okay, uh, our uh, if we could have the next uh, piece of legislation. Resolution number 2022-0221, awarding a total sum not to exceed $1 million to the City of Fairview Park for the Public Facility Regional Environmental Improvement Project. Okay, and if you could just state your name for the record. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Patrick J. Cooney. I'm the Mayor of the City of Fairview Park. You're welcome. Thank you. I'd like to thank you and Council for this opportunity to talk to you about an exciting project here in Fairview Park. I did send over... Okay, thank you. I'd also like to thank, I know she's not here with us today, but uh, Councilwoman uh, Nan Baker for her support of this project and, uh, and other projects that here in Fairview Park and in the West Shore communities. Yeah, the clicker, I think, yeah. I never have the remote at home, so I don't know how to use it. So, <laughs> um, that's fair. So, uh, this just to give a general context for council of uh, of the project here. This, this is a slide showing Fairview Park and a proximity to the lake, uh, and also, uh, if you'll notice, the the whole eastern uh, side of uh, Fairview Park borders the Metro Parks, and the service garage that we're asking for funding. Uh, through the ARPA dollars uh, is abuts uh, the, the Metro Parks. And I have with me today um, uh, our Director of Public Service and Development, Mary Kay Costello, um, and who's done a lot of work on this. And ironically, uh, the former Director of uh, Public Service and Development, Mr. Leininger, uh, is here today, and uh, uh, and he, he has done some work in trying to get this replaced as well. So. Uh, it's great to see him here as, 
today. Uh, so we're, again, looking for funds to uh, install a new service garage. Uh, that will have some features that will allow our regional partners in the West Shore to use that facility, as well as some environmentally friendly uh, features uh, for a decanting pad and also for solar panels. Um, the service garage actually, uh, which is a little bit uh, south of uh, City Hall, is in a low to moderate income area. Um, and the service garage itself was built in 1957. Uh, we were able to locate uh, some plans that the city has been looking at replacing this facility uh, since 1981. And due to problems with funding, uh, they have not been able to do that. Uh, and those are the plans from 1981, uh, hoping to, to replace the facility. Um, the next slide is a, uh, a picture of uh, a storage bin behind the current garage. These photos were taken in 2006. Um, uh, we were able to, to improve that area uh, and it is still it's much more functional than it was in back in 2006. Uh, but that shows that, what, that you know, Fairview Park is looking at ways to see what it can do uh, to improve these facilities and stretch the dollars as far as we can. And I'll show you a picture of that uh, later in the, in the presentation. Here's a nice overhead view uh, of the service yard. As you'll notice, um, there are items scattered throughout um, the yard we have a lot of our equipment that it's exposed because we don't have any place to store it. Um, if you'll notice on the slide on the left, uh, the, the proximity of the service garage uh, to Coe Creek, which leads to the Rocky River uh, that'll go underneath that bridge that uh, Nicole was just talking about uh, to Lake Erie. Um, uh, the next slide, here's some of the service, uh, the sheds that we have. We have five different sheds in the service yard. The one on the bottom right uh, is the one that was uh, fixed back in 2006. And because of the lack of storage, we have things uh, you know, stored throughout uh, the yard. And it's pretty inefficient to deal with um, in getting things done. Uh, here we have uh, our, our equipment. Uh, plow trucks, dump trucks, sewer vac, uh, tree truck that are all stored outside. And um, you know, because of the lack of storage that we have, a lot of these uh, vehicles, you know, they have hydraulics, they have uh, uh, things that are, you know, that really it's better if they're not outside, that they are uh, in store, stored inside. Uh, the city recently purchased a, purchased a sewer vac. We're anxiously awaiting its delivery in the next couple of months. And, uh, you know, that has a computer uh, uh, attached to it, hydraulics, and we, we don't want to leave that outside. We'd like to have that uh, stored inside so we can preserve it uh, in, in the long run. Um, here's a picture of the roof of the current service garage from 2019. Um, as you can see, it's in very poor condition. Uh, this, uh, this picture was taken in conjunction with the study to see what cost uh, uh, could be, you know, what it would cost to do some repairs to the garage. Um, this photo, these photos are also from 2019. They're interior photos. You can see uh, the water that's coming in. Uh, it's not uh, ideal to store items in there. And it's not really a great environment for our personnel to work in as well. Uh, the next picture, again, uh, shows some deterioration. Those are the lentils of, of the building over one of the service garage doors. Uh, the other doors have similar deterioration. Um, so you can see that we have some structural problems, uh, both on the roof and uh, on the side of the building. This is a estimate that was received in 2019. Director Leininger was involved in that. Uh, and the estimate uh, at that time in 2019 to do some repairs to the roof and to the walls was $433,000. Uh, we have since talked to the consultant who, was, who did that estimate 
and he shared with us that he didn't think it was a good investment then. Uh, I, don't, I think Director Leninger felt the same way, uh, and it certainly wouldn't be a good investment now to, to put any money into that building. Uh, and that uh, was 2019, and the costs have only gone up. Uh, this is one of the features uh, that we would like to add to the new building. This is a uh, decanting pad, which is where uh, sewer debris from the sewer vacs can be uh, dropped and then um, you know, cleaned out. Uh, that's from uh, Rocky River. 80% uh, of our wastewater in Fairview Park is treated at the Rocky River Wastewater Treatment Plant. Uh, we are partners uh, with that plant with the cities of Bay Village, Rocky River, and Westlake. Uh, all of those communities use this pad now, and due to the layout, the, the debris is dumped in there. Some of the water drains out, but then the personnel actually have to, to shovel the debris uh, into a bin to, to have it uh, taken away. With this new pad that we're asked that we would have uh, Part of this building, um, the debris would have an opportunity to dry out and make it much easier to remove and much safer for the workers. Uh, again, a nice overhead view of the um, of the of the site, showing our current garage uh, bottom left, and in the blue where we would uh, like to have the new garage and the decanting pad, and then also have a sanitary sewer hooked up so that. Items the, the, from the decanting pad and wash trucks would be properly uh, treated. Uh, our our uh, city engineer, who we've worked with for a number of years, they've previously designed one of these decanting pads for another municipality. Uh, so they would uh, were ready to go um, you know, with, with this design, with McKay Engineering. Uh, we've also, um, you know, we have a lot of legacy buildings in Fairview Park, municipal buildings, and which really don't lend an opportunity to uh, for green energy. Uh, we have talked, uh, Director Costello has talked to uh, Director Mike Foley about uh, so, uh, solar panels on this uh, building, um, you know, and, and the opportunity to, to have that uh, on this, this building. Uh, if that were to occur, it would be the largest uh, commercial building in Fairview Park to have this feature. So something that we definitely want to pursue. Uh, here's a picture of the potential building. It's not very fancy. Uh, we, you know, it's uh, it's a pole barn, big bays to to get in and work. Uh, we have a very talented service department, and uh, we would have a lot of our after the construction of the facility have our service department add a lot of uh, various amenities to the building, you know, to make it functional for us. Um, we have a preliminary estimate from our city engineer, uh, Kim Kerber, for the decanting pad, uh, and sanitary sewer installation, about $632,000. Uh, we estimate that the total project would be about $1,950,000. Uh, the city would commit uh, $950,000 uh, to it via borrowing. Uh, we feel it's a very good long-term investment. But we also I've had, I have identified a lot of potential uh, grant partners due to the type of uh, benefits that uh, the city would receive. Uh, you know, and these are things that we will pursue. Uh, and, and if unsuccessful, again, the city would be able project so that's uh, that's all I have I don't know if there's any questions okay um, thank you for being here today and um, I know this is an important project um, for uh, Fairview Park uh, councilwoman uh, Baker is a little under the weather yes and um, I know she's expressed um, her um, approval of this project and um, uh, wants to see this uh, go forward, I know. Um, uh, let me just start. Uh, what, what is the expectation as far as a start date? I'm sorry that I did. Uh, so we would hope to get started in uh, early of 2023 and complete have the project completed in late 2024. Um, and let me, uh, so late, 
completion date would be late 2024. Yes. Um, and um, uh, is there a, a, a firm that's going to be doing it, or is it going to be in-house doing the Well, work? we would work with our city engineer in preparing the plans uh, and then go out to bid to have, uh, you know, have, have the, the facility constructed. Okay. Um, and then uh, you're almost a match as far as the the funding goes you're putting you're putting your own funds into this project as well from the from the city in the tune of you said I think nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars right right um, so you're vested in the project as as well too so um, I'll open it up uh, questions for my colleagues mr. Sweeney and then mr. Miller thank you mr. chairman uh, the director of public service seems she's stoic can she come up to the microphone oh, absolutely <laughs> oh, I mean, it's wonderful Director Costello, how are you? Mary Kay Costello, Director of Public Service and Development for the City of Fairview Park. Uh, I am well, thank you. Uh, can you tell me how this is going to make through the chair, going to make your life easier? First, I'd like to say that it's going to make the environment a better place by reducing pollutants that reach Coke Creek. But our service department is an incredible group of uh, hardworking folk and uh, we have the highest uh, fifth highest per capita of park acreage uh, in the county and so they're very busy people we're going to be able to give them safe clean warm facilities that they don't currently have we're also going to be able to extend the life of our equipment and maintain that in a in a fashion that uh, protects our resources so that answers your question. Thank you. Yes, it does. And for the record, I have the privilege of knowing her for 40 years. I hadn't gotten that impression. We were, <laughs> since we were two, right? <laughs> since two. <laughs> I like that. Uh, my bad. And <laughs> I just, I'm excited that the project mayor and the, your, the dynamic team that's here is just going to do wonders for Fairview Park. And just I can only echo uh, Councilwoman Ann Baker's excitement to be able to help this project along. She's talked to me about it back there. Right. Absolutely. So, yep. Absolutely. He's been championing the project all through throughout. Um, Mr. Miller. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, to uh, to the mayor or, or Ms. Costello, uh, you mentioned about being fifth in the county in something, but I didn't quite hear that. Could you Repeat that. Yes, Mr. Miller. We're fifth in the county, according to the county planning data book, for park acreage in oh, front of okay. Independence and Strongsville and um, some other larger communities. We're really proud and, of that. And uh, also, could you tell me what a decanting pad is and what it is used for? Yes, decanting pad is a fancy word for a washout bay, but it's a little more technical than a washout bay. It allows our personnel to offload solids that are mixed with uh, water that's been vacuumed from a sanitary sewer and needs to be emptied. Currently, the pit that the mayor showed you has to be used. There's no other facility to offload those solids that are mixed with water. And then our personnel have to shovel up over their head into a container so that a sludge hauler can remove that debris. This proposed facility will allow the sewer jet to empty and dry, and a front end loader can then deposit those solids into a container. No one has to shovel this material over their shoulders ever again. And this particular type of facility does not exist in our region. So we would open that to our neighbors in Rocky River and Bay. And Westlake has a, um, a pad that they currently use for street sweepings, for their street, street sweeping machine, but they do not use it for their sewer jet. So we would extend the invitation for them to participate as well. Sounds good. Thank you. Appreciate that. And that's good to hear that, too, and, the regional aspect of this as well. Shouldn't and, be lost. And, Mr. Chairman, I would like to 
ask my name be added to this resolution, please. Okay, Mr. Miller's going to add his name. Uh, Ms. Turner, throw my gonna, name on there. Or do you have a comment, or do you want to add your name? Would you add my name? Ms. Ms. Turner would like yeah. her name added, and, and Sweeney. Ms. Conwell, and Mr. Sweeney, and um, I'm going to add my name as well. So it's a very worthwhile project for Ooh. the environment, and Thank you. Um, we wish you much much success on this. I'm going to make a motion to move this on to the full council for second reading. Do I have second. A second. We have a motion and a second to move this on for second reading. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. And uh, it'll be moving on to the second reading uh, on August 2nd. Okay. Thank Alrighty. you so much. Thanks so much. Thanks for being Thank here you. today, Mayor. Thank and, you for your time. Uh, Estella, good luck with uh, Mr. Sweeney. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be more that's, than luck. <laughs> And before I read the item, just to note for the record that uh, there's a typo, uh, two typos on the agenda for the rates, um, just in the titles. Um, so I'm going to read the corrected year. Resolution number 2022-0240, fixing the 2023 water storm and sanitary sewer maintenance and or sewer treatment rates in accordance with Ohio Revised Code Section 6117.02. Please state your name for the record. Nicole English with Public Works. These two next resolutions go together. As you know, we do this every year that we're required by the state to fix the rates and then approve and confirm them. And so we normally do it in two different resolutions at the same time. So this year, um, we've met with the different cities to determine how um, their rates are doing. If any changes need to be made, there's only one change being made, and that is the city of Brooklyn, and it's not increasing either. It's switching between the storm and sewer. So it's just realigning um, where the money is going to in order to better fit their future projects. So not um, many changes, but we do are required to do this and file it with the state before um, the second week in September. So we are asking for second reading suspension to be sure that we can get it down to the state in time. Okay. Um, what's How do the rates compare to previous years? I All the same except for Brooklyn, the where they're just going to switch between um, sanitary and, um, and water. So storm, sanitary and storm. So it, they just look at kind of what projects are coming up and where their bu their fa fund balances are, and they can't move between the two without a legislative action. So this is kind of an easier way just to balance Right. So I know we do this for folks who might not be on this, have not been on this committee. I know we do this annually. We do Correct. this every year. And one of the things, how do you determine the rates? So we work with the cities on what their needs are. So when we first take over a city, we go in and look at, you know, the assessment of all their sewers and what projects need to be done and kind of how much they can afford, what they're charging you know, today, what we need in the future. And then we work with them on projects going forward. So a lot of cities kind of start at a lower end, and then if they identify some bigger projects, then you'll look to raise them at certain times. If they end up with enough funding and they can kind of lower them, you see that happen once in a while too, um, just depending on what comes up. So standard maintenance, we have kind of a rate that we suggest to them is works for you know just standard maintenance. But then if there are bigger project needs, um, then you know we'd go in and talk about rate increases. So we meet with the cities annually and just kind of address where they stand, where their balances are, what they have come coming up um, in their capital plans, and then how we can best address them. And um, what um, uh, percentage of cities are now with the mm. county, working with the county? I know, I know it's increasing. I don't know. Increasing. I think, yes, it is increasing. Or the number, do you know We're the number? We're up to around 40, I believe, in some fashion, whether they're full service or partial service. So there's some cities we know will, I mean, Cleveland will never probably be with us. They have a massive organization right. themselves. And then we also have Lorain County that has an agreement with us the GCRTA, the Metro Parks, which we actually just increased at Board of Control there um, by 100000 more dollars they wanted this year done. So we have some outside that aren't municipalities that we also work with. Okay. Um, and then um, lastly, um, when do these new um, rates take effect next year? Correct, for 2023. Okay. But they do have to be filed per ORC before September 12th. Your meeting is the 13th, so that's why we're asking for the second reading suspension. Okay. Um, questions from my colleagues, Ms. Conwell? Through the chair to uh, Ms. English. So the previous contract that we talked about with Olmstead Township, right, getting mm -hmm. this sewer stuff, well, uh, with the parcels, how, how do they participate in this? I know they have to be 
So this is a base rate that everybody pays if they are part of our program. And so there is a base rate, and that's just covering, you know, general the regular work that you do. And then if you do above and beyond where you add sewer, this is main these rates are mainly for like repair of existing sewers. Okay. Um, not new sewers necessarily. It could be used for new sewers if the city has a balance to pay for it um, and want to. Um, it, you know, we really work directly with the cities on these. We are the keepers of their funds and advisors, but they have to determine how they want to spend them, all the municipalities. So as far as raising, you know, we can't just go in and raise rates for anybody. This has to be passed by cities, um, councils before they come to us anyhow. Okay, so do is Olmstead Township in it already? So Olmstead okay. Township, they, we, do charge, we do charge on them. Okay. And their sewer fund is had a, a has a decent balance, but again, we use part of it to do new projects, but then part of it there is maintenance work that has to be done. Okay. So we, we so do when the that fund. other contract when that all gets built and whatever, they'll be probably added in. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions, Mr. Sweeney? Do you have a question? No. Mr. Miller. Okay. Seeing none. Um, so you're moving this along. Uh, Quickly, reading. why again? What's it? Why, why did you want a second reading? Submission? Oh, it's per the ORC, we have to send the rates oh. down to the state by September 12th. Okay. Yeah, with and so no second recess. reading. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so I'll make a motion for second reading suspension on R2022-240. Do I have okay. a second? Okay, we have a motion and a second for second reading suspension. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay, the ayes have it. And um, Madam Clerk, if you could just read the last piece of legislation. I know this is kind of a companion piece, as Ms. English said. Resolution number 2022-0241, approving and confirming the 2023 water storm and sanitary sewer maintenance and or sewage treatment assessments in accordance with Ohio Revised Code Section 617.02. Okay. Move for approval and second. All right, well, that, that's with that, without any further questions or comments, we'll make a, he, we have a motion for a secondary suspension <laughs> and a second. All those in favor, you don't see that much. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Yeah, thank you, Miss English. So just one more thing. I know we did work with your office and you on setting an airport tour that had come uh, up yes. the last committee Yes, meeting. and I so sent a uh, response yesterday. Happy to yes. um, host And that, that goes for any other committee member or council yes. member who wants to see the airport. Correct. We're setting up a tour. Now you can't fly anywhere, but right. you're just a, yeah, yeah. If yeah, I'll talk to Molly yes. about doing just that. Just yes. How about a helicopter? Right? It's not like Willy Wonka. So I mean, it's no just helicopters like, there. <laughs> okay. I don't think. Is there any? Is there any planes? Miscellaneous business before the committee this morning. And seeing none, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Um, do I have a second? Second. Okay. And uh, uh, public works shall adjourn at eleven twenty-six a.m. <laughs>